This is Math 151. We are taking a look at section 4.4. And section 4.4 is about the mean value theorem. And before we get to the mean value theorem, we're going to start with Rolle's theorem. And uh, it says this. Uh, assume f is differentiable on some interval i. If the outputs of the endpoints of the function are equal, then there must be an interior point at c where the derivative of the function is 0. Again, what Rolle's theorem is saying is we have some function, right? So it has some start point and some end point, but its start point, you know, it's like over this interval, right? But its start point and its end point have the same um, output values. In other words, like, like its height starts and ends at the same spot. And what's that saying is what, if we draw a continuous function in here, like we never lift up our pen, there has to be at least one point on this function where the derivative is zero and in this case that i drew those two and if you don't believe it try and draw like because what happens is if you go up you've got to come back down right <laughs> to get back to that same height and when that happens you have some turning point where the uh where the slope is zero where the derivative is zero so let's check it out. Uh, if we have some function, and I'm going to throw it on the interval negative 2, 0. So first off, we have to have the same outputs at the same spot, uh, the same outputs for each endpoint. So f of negative 2, uh, that's negative 2 squared plus 2 times negative 2, 4 minus 4 is 0. Okay, and then f of 0, that's 0 squared plus 0 is 0. Yeah, so they both have, so the endpoints, right that's our interval right there our endpoints have the same output same have the same height so the slope between them is zero it, or we could think of it that way so what Rolle's theorem is telling us is that if i take the derivative of it there has to be some point in there who where the derivative equals zero so let's take the derivative uh, 2x plus 2 and we could probably solve that equal to zero Subtract to uh, x is negative 1. Yep. So that's where it happens. It happens when x is negative 1. Um, so, yeah, rules, rules happens. If rules tells us we have a slope of 0 between endpoints, we have to have a slope of 0, at least one other point uh, between them, as long as it's continuous, right? You can see how that continuity is, is vital to this. Um, the mean value theorem basically slants slants it it doesn't lit, limit us to a slope of zero it says no matter what this slope is between the endpoints that slope has to happen somewhere on the graph uh, or, or the derivative of the function let me write it out So f is continuous over the interval ab. It's differentiable um, inside of ab. And this says, uh, mean value theorem, there exists at least one point, and that points at c, such that f prime of c, the derivative of the function at c, is equal to, that's the slope between the endpoints, right? Output minus output, change in y, input minus input over change in x. In other words, if I have something here and I have something here, those are my endpoints, right? That's a and that's b. Think of them as the point uh, A, F of A, and B, F of B. It, it has some slope between them. But if I try and draw, you know, some, some continuous line between them, I have at least one point where the derivative at that point is going to match that slope. Could be more, but there's at least one. So again, what this is saying is the slope of the line between the endpoints, this is a continuous function and differentiable, that slope has to be repeated again somewhere on that graph. So let's investigate it. Let's find the c value for this case. Um, so our function is f of x is square root of x, and that happens on our interval 0 to 9. We've got our mean value theorem. We want to show that this satisfies the mean value theorem. We want to find where it happens. So uh, we're going to need 
the derivative of this thing. So f of f prime of that, right? That's x to the one half. So that's one half x to the negative one half. We know, which is one over two root x. So there's our derivative. So what we're going to need is the slope between those two lines. So if I think about this function, it's going to look like this. It starts at zero, gets out here to nine, and I need to find the slope between them. So output at b minus output at a, change in y, uh, minus b minus a, change in x. Nine, f of nine is three, so this is the point nine, three f of 0 is 0. So this would be um, 3 minus 0 over, over 9 minus 0, 3 ninths, which is 1 third. So the slope from here to here, that slope is 1 third. And again, what the mean value theorem is saying is that this derivative has to equal one third at some point. So let's let's solve it. So when is that equal to one third? What's nice about this is if I multiply both sides by three and multiply by both sides by two root x, I get three equals two root x. I could divide by two. Uh, three halves equals square root of x, square both sides, and I get nine fourths. And nine fourths is in the interval, zero nine. So there we go. That's the point where it happens. Nine fourths, that's like two something. So it happens pretty early in the graph. And if I wanted, I could, you know, look at Desmos, check it, see if it see if it checks out. So say you take a trip and your average speed is 50 miles per hour. Right? Like you uh you drive for three hours. And you drove 150 miles. So your average speed, right, in miles per hour, is 50 miles per hour. The implication to this is that you had to have gone 50 miles per hour at least once during that trip. You could have gone faster. You had to go 50 miles per hour. What we do know is you had to go 50 miles per hour at least once during that trip. So if during that trip the whole road was 45 miles per hour, we know you sped at least by 5 miles per hour. So we have this uh, projectile, this movement. Um, so we have this displacement formula. Uh, this is some sort of projectile. I'm not sure the details. T's time. Uh, S of T is the height, and uh, let's say this is in seconds and feet, yeah. Um, how long does it take to reach the ground? What's its average speed? And when is that average speed met? So, um, how long does it take to hit the ground? So that is basically asking us, when does this equal zero? So, uh, subtract 100 from both sides. Divide by negative 16, 100 over 16, square root, 10 fourths. So it takes 10 fourths, which is 5 halves of a second for this thing to get to the ground. So that is when it hits the ground. So now we can talk about its its average, average speed. We know it, it uh, at time 0, the height, plug in a 0 is 100. So our average speed is going to be the change in height divided by the change in time. So the change in height is 100 over uh, 5 halves seconds. So 100 divided by 5 halves. Oh, let's say that change, that change is negative. Let's make it negative since it's going downward. So that would be negative 40 uh, feet per second. Um, that's its average velocity. So when does this happen? When does that first derivative equal negative 40? So that first derivative 
is negative 32t. So when does that equal negative 40? Divide by 32. Uh, 40 over 32. So it looks like that happens at 5 fourths seconds is when that average speed is met. If the derivative is zero uh, for everything that's in the interval, then uh, that function is a constant. In other words, like it's like f of x equals three, right? It's always at the same height because the derivative is always zero. It's flat. It's not changing. Now we're assuming here that f and g are both differentiable over the uh, over the interval i. So if uh, the derivative of f is equal to the derivative of g for everything, for all x values in in that interval i, so that's always the case, then uh, f of x equals g of x plus c, some constant. In other words, if they're always changing by the same amount, one's just a shifted version of the other, right? That that dis, dis difference would be c. Um, because if they're changing the same amount, they have the same shape. They just aren't necessarily in the same place. And two other ideas that we have we've hinted at, talked about actually in this course before. Um, if the derivative is greater than zero, if it's positive on an interval, then that function is increasing over the interval. It's going up, right? It might not be going up at the same rate, but if it's always positive, it's going up, right? Those slopes are all positive. If you, whoops, if you try and sketch them all on there. And then if the derivative is negative on an interval, then the function is decreasing over the interval. It's going, going down. It could be going down a lot of different ways. <laughs> the whole thing went down. It could be going down a whole, uh, a lot of different ways. But as if the, whoops, that's not going down the whole time. But if, uh, if the derivative is negative, then it's decreasing. All right, take a peek at the homework. Uh, send your questions my way.